Can obesity be protective? Can rapid weight loss sometimes be harmful? Is there a hidden cause for why some people can't lose weight that practically no one even knows about? The answer is yes, but here's a clue. It's not related to diet, exercise, or sleep. This is Elliot from EO Nutrition, and in today's video, we're going to look at one of the most overlooked reasons for why you can't lose fat and why obesity might be beneficial in certain circumstances. However, before we get to that, let's look at the basics. Obesity levels in the US continue to rise, being found in 41.9% of adults. Although sugar is often blamed for this, the data show that sugar consumption has actually decreased while obesity rate continues to rocket upwards. Now, there are probably multiple factors which can explain the modern obesity epidemic, including the enormously high intake of linoleic acid, derived from toxic seed oils. However, here we're going to focus on one thing that you probably haven't paid that much attention to, and that is humanity's exposure to tens of thousands of toxic chemicals on a daily basis, many of which have been directly associated with obesity. There's an estimated 84,000 chemicals used in commerce, and of those, only about 1% have even been tested for human safety. And where do they come from? They're found in plastics, flame retardants, furniture, household cleaning products, pesticides, foods, receipts, even in the air that we breathe and the water that we drink. Many are called persistent organic pollutants because they stick around for many years and have a long half-life. Furthermore, they bioaccumulate in living organisms. They include organochlorine pesticides, industrial chemicals, PCBs, and dioxins, among many others. And if you think this doesn't apply to you, then you are absolutely wrong. Most of the studies have found this stuff in 100% of test samples. Is it any wonder then that dangerous levels have been found in breast milk and within newborn's umbilical cords? Microplastics were even found in the blood of 80% of participants in one recent study. It's important to know that most of these chemicals are lipophilic, meaning that they are attracted to fat. When they're absorbed into the body, they become stored in our fat tissue and can remain undisturbed for many years. These toxins are thought to cause obesity through numerous different mechanisms. These include triggering inflammation, disturbing cell energy metabolism, and increasing size of fat cells. Aside from making people fat, persistent organic pollutants are also associated with diabetes, cardiovascular diseases, along with a host of other illnesses of the hormonal systems, immunological and neurological systems. But here is where it gets super interesting. Body fat is a storage reservoir for these toxic chemicals, preventing them from getting to other vital organs where they could cause real damage. To quote the authors of this study, the accumulation of persistent organic pollutants within adipose tissue is believed to decrease their availability to other cells and tissues, thereby limiting their systemic toxicity. In fact, researchers have discovered a collection of interesting findings that they call the obesity paradox. In multiple studies on both animals and humans, obesity was found to be protective against a host of chronic diseases, including dementia, liver cirrhosis, and even elderly mortality. There was one study that looked at the association between fat mass and mortality in the elderly. In people with low levels of chemicals, obesity increased the risk of death by two to three times. This is expected. However, in people with high levels of chemicals, those with higher fat were five times less likely to die than those with lower amounts of fat. The author's conclusion was that these findings are consistent with our hypothesis that adipose tissue provides a relatively safe storage of toxic lipophilic chemicals, a phenomenon that could explain the obesity paradox. Although I was already roughly familiar with this information after reading this book, to give credit where credit is due, I'd like to thank Dr. Brian Walsh, at Metabolic Fitness Pro for really drilling down these concepts and expanding on the topic in a lot more depth in one of his workshops. So let's just get this straight. Someone can store these toxins in their fat cells for decades and this can be protective because it's only very slowly released and it protects the vital organs. But the question is, what happens when someone wants to lose that weight? As fat cells break down, they release massive amounts of these chemicals into the bloodstream. The high toxic load can be redistributed across the body to the vital organs. This can go on to disrupt the function of the thyroid gland, the primary organ which controls how fast the body burns energy. In fact, at least two studies showed that organochlorines, which were released during weight loss, caused a drop in active thyroid hormone and reduced the resting metabolic rate. 
In other words, what this means is that people who lost weight retoxified themselves and these toxins reduce their metabolism, which would naturally make it more difficult to lose weight anymore. Because of this, some researchers believe that this might be one of the reasons for weight loss stalls and yo-yo dieting. The main organ responsible for dealing with the burden of environmental toxins is the liver. After being released from fat, the toxic load on the liver is very high, and rapid weight loss has been known to trigger liver disease under certain circumstances. This can happen because the liver only has a limited amount of resources and can become overwhelmed. Furthermore, these environmental chemicals are also known to inhibit liver detoxification. From the liver, toxins are packaged up, carried through the bowel into the gallbladder and subsequently dumped into the gut. Ideally, this junk would remain in the gut until it gets passed into the toilet. However, around 95% of those bile salts are recycled through something called enterohepatic recirculation. This means it travels back from the gut to the liver and then back to the gut again and then back to the liver and so on and so forth. In this way, bile is recycled up to 13 times per day. Unfortunately, the toxins we're trying to get rid of can simply be reabsorbed as well. This means that despite our attempts to get rid of this stuff from the body, we continue to retoxify ourselves. We have a major problem here. When it gets into the bloodstream, it impairs metabolism. There's lots of other potential risks with that. And then also when we try to get it out through the gut, it just becomes reabsorbed. So the question is, what can you actually do about this? Scientists have found one way of preventing reabsorption of toxins using a non-absorbable fat called Alestra. One study on animals showed that weight loss tripled the concentration of this chemical called hexachlorobenzene in the brain, whereas the levels dropped by half in those fed Alestra. Furthermore, they showed a 30-fold increase in the rate of chemical excretion through the gut. Similar findings were later repeated in human studies. Unfortunately, Alestra has a ton of negative side effects, but the concept still applies. If we can bind and catch them in the gut, then we can effectively clear these toxins from the body to prevent them being reabsorbed. One way to bind bile acids in the gut is by consuming psyllium husk on a regular basis, along with perhaps a few other dietary fibers. Furthermore, two other binders have shown great capacity for holding onto these types of toxins in the gut activated charcoal being one and bentonite clay being the other. Both can be taken in supplemental form. But aside from binding these pollutant chemicals in the gut, we also need to look at supporting the liver to export them in the first place. It's well known that the liver gets hit the hardest in this kind of scenario, so it's important to provide as much support as possible. The liver uses several different ways of clearing these toxins. One is through glutathione, which the toxins are known to deplete. Phosphatidylcholine is important for exporting bile from the liver. Tudka, taurine, and glycine support bile acid synthesis and clearance of waste from the liver. Next, what we also want to do is make sure that the bile is flowing sufficiently from the gallbladder into the gut. An age-old solution for this is using bitter herbs before, during, or after meals. My favorites are gentian root and dandelion, although any bitter herb should suffice. So just to recap, one of the protective effects of obesity is to store environmental toxins and prevent them from getting to the vital organs. However, during weight loss, particularly when it's rapid weight loss, what happens is that the toxins are released, they redistribute to the vital organs, and this has many potential health consequences. Aside from placing a burden on the liver, this can also go on to impair metabolism, slow the metabolic rate, and make it more difficult to lose any more weight after that. Supporting the liver, the gallbladder, and binding these toxins in the gut is a safe and effective way to clear this stuff from the body without risking retoxifying oneself. I therefore advise anyone with obesity, particularly morbid obese individuals, to follow a similar protocol to this if aiming to lose a lot of weight. However, this is probably the minimum that someone should be doing. And in the next video, I'm gonna look at how we can take this one step further and supercharge the detoxification of these compounds from the human body. So if you're interested in that, please stay tuned. So if you like this video or you found it helpful, please like and subscribe, drop a comment below, share it far and wide. And if that's everything, I will see you next video.